Welcome to tutorial 3 on algebraic fractions as they arise on the Edexcel Core 3 Maths A-Level module but this work should be applicable to most Core Maths A-Level modules. As always for more help with your Maths studies GCSE or A-Level do see Hegarty Maths on YouTube or the website. Okay just to start let's check what Edexcel says we need to know. In the previous two tutorials we've done a bit of simplifying of rational expressions, factorising and cancelling and we've added, subtracted, multiplied and divide rational expressions. Now we're going to do something called algebraic division. Do note again the denominator will be limited to a linear or quadratic so the bottom can only be linear or quadratic. Okay let's start. Uh, I'm going to start by talking about improper fractions, mixed numbers, and introduce maybe some two new terms called the quotient and remainder. Now, what's an improper fraction with numbers? Well, it's uh, a fraction, so a division that you're doing, where the top number, the numerator, is, divis uh, is bigger than the bottom. Nine's bigger than four, improper fraction. Five's bigger than three, improper. Hundred's bigger than seven, improper and 40 is bigger than 9, improper. Now, because the top number, the numerator, is bigger than the bottom, we know that the uh, denominator goes into the numerator more than one time, a certain number of times. Now, we can work out how many times and what's left over, and that's converting to a mixed number. So how we do this? How many times does 4 go into 9, whole times? Well, 2, and you've got 1 left, so you've got 1 out of 4, a quarter left. How many times does 3 go into 5? Well, only once, and it's got 2 left, 2 out of 3, 2 thirds left. How many times does 7 go into 100? Well, 14, because 14 times 7 is 98, okay? And you must have 2 left, 2 out of 7. And lastly, how many times does 9 go into 40? Well, it goes in four whole times, and you'll be left with four left out of nine. Okay, so this column here is mixed numbers. Going from improper fractions to mixed numbers, we do a division, we calculate the remainder, and we write it down. Now, the quotient is the whole number. How many whole times did the denominator go into the numerator? This is called the quotient. So the quotient here is two, the quotient here is one, the quotient here is 14, and the quotient here is 4. How many whole times the denominator went into the numerator? What's the remainder? Well, the remainder is this here, remainder 1. Remember, in value terms, it's what it, the, we have a remainder of 1, 1 quarter, because we're doing a division by 4, but we just write the remainder as 1. The remainder here is 2, the remainder here is 2, the remainder here is 4. Now remember, these aren't the values. This is 1 quarter, 2 thirds, 2 sevenths, 4 ninths. But when we're writing down what the remainder is, that's our remainder. And the objective of this lesson is to do the same with these type of things here called improper algebraic fractions. And we're going to try and write them as um, a division, having done the division, and write down what the quotient and remainder is. Okay, so just before we get on to that, a quick definition. An improper fraction is one whose numerator has a degree larger than the, de than the denominator. So, in order for us to have this improper algebraic fraction, the top must have a higher order or degree than the bottom, i.e. its highest power of x or whatever the algebra is. Now here, the highest power of x is 1, x, x, the highest power here is x squared. Is the top have a big, does the top have a bigger order than the bottom? No, this isn't improper. I just put it in to show the difference. What about this? Is this improper? Yeah, we've got an x squared, a quadratic on top, a linear on bottom. This certainly is. But from our previous work, we could actually work that out with any, without any fancy extra methods. By factorising, if we wrote this as x plus 2 x plus 3, factorise the top, all over x plus 3, the x plus 3's would cancel and we'd just be left with x plus 2. So we can work that in a very straightforward way. 
Now these two here, the top degree, we've got an x squared here and a linear on the bottom, so that's certainly improper. We've got a cubic, an x cubed on top, a linear on bottom. So again, that's certainly um, an improper algebraic fraction. And there's no obvious way to factorise these to make cancellation easy. And these are the type that we're going to focus on in this tutorial here to try and work out this division without being able to do factorising. So we're going to use a couple of different methods to do it. And at the end, we're going to have to be able to identify the quotient and the remainder. Okay, easiest way to do it is to start off by doing some examples. I'm going to show you two ways how to do it. One way is by long division. Uh, it's a straightforward algorithm that you can learn. Another way is a quicker way for me, a shortcut method that I use to do these. There is a method in the Core 3 book that's quite long. It's using the remainder theorem. I don't really like that way. I don't find it uh, particularly um, appealing. It's a bit long-winded. So I'm going to show you a slightly different way and hopefully a quicker way. So learn both ways. You always have the fallback of long division, but if you can master this quick method, it's really handy to be able to do, it saves you time in the exam. Okay, let's start off with example one, and we're going to do this by long division. This method relies on writing everything very neatly in columns, so please watch carefully how I write it. We're going to divide x cubed plus x squared minus 7 by x minus 3 and state the quotient and remainder. This is how we do it. We've got x cubed plus x squared. Now, we have no x's. It's very important you write that down. You write there are no x's in there because this method relies on all terms being in their appropriate columns. If you forget the x, it will go horribly wrong. So everything must be written in descending order and don't miss anything out. Minus 7. So, we are taking that and we are dividing it, you may remember this from division lower down the school, and we are dividing it by x minus 3. Okay, what we're going to do now? Well, what we're going to do is, what do we need up here to multiply by this to get an x cubed term? We want an x cubed. Well, we need an x squared. So we're going to write an x squared in the x squared column. And then we're going to multiply this x squared by this whole expression. When we do that, we get x cubed minus 3x squared. Okay? And now we're going to put a line underneath it, and we're going to subtract these two expressions. x cubed minus x cubed is nothing. x squared subtract negative 3x squared is actually 4x squared. Okay, and then we're going to bring down the 0x. There's a 0x here, which I'm just going to write there. Okay, now you're going to ask yourself, what do I need here to multiply by the x minus 3 to give me a 4x squared? I always deal with the leading term. Well, I need 4x, uh, 4x, so I'm going to add 4x. And now this 4x, I'm going to multiply it by everything here. And I'm going to get 4x squared. And 4x multiplied by negative 3 is negative 12x. Just like before, at this stage, put a line under it and subtract the two expressions. 4x squared take away 4x squared is nothing and 0 subtract negative 12x is 12x. And at this stage, I'm going to carry down the negative 7. And we're going to do the same thing here. What do I need here? So I, when I multiply it by the x minus 3, I get the 12x. Well, I'm going to need a 12, a positive 12. 12 times this gives me 12x. Uh, subtract 36 and at this stage I put a line underneath and I subtract the two expressions 12x take away 12x is no x's and negative 7 subtract negative 36 would actually be positive 29 and I'm done now 
that is now my whole division done because I've got um, I've got to the end here and I've got no more terms to divide into. So, what's my answer? Well, when I've done this here, it's important to always write your answer. X cubed plus x squared minus 7. I have, in the working above, divided it by a method called long division. It's a long division algorithm. And what I've got at the end, I've got a whole, you can think of this as a whole number, or the how many whole parts how many whole times x minus 3 goes into this? Well, it goes in x squared plus 4x plus 12. And what remainder is left over? Well, there's a 29 remainder left over. So we've got 29 left, 29 over x minus 3 left. And that's our division. Now, let's state our quotient and remainder. Our quotient is this whole thing here, x squared plus 4x plus 12, and our remainder, well, we just write as 29. But when we're writing uh, this out, this is a, an identity, by the way, the two are identical. When we write this out uh, as, as the result of the division, we must write the 29 over what our divisor is. And that's our answer, okay? Now, I'm going to do the exact same question, okay, but in a, uh, a slightly different and hopefully easier way. So, I'm going to do the same question here. Now, I'm dividing this by this. So, I've got x cubed plus x squared plus no x's minus 7, and... I'm going to divide it by this. So you could think of that as like factorizing out an x minus 3. And the question is, what needs to be left over here to make all these terms right? And what remainder needs at the end? Well, how would I get an x cubed? Well, this would have to be, the only way you could get it is if that was x squared. And then, maybe in a different colour pen, that would give me the x cubed, and I'm done. But it also gives me negative 3x squared. It gives me a negative 3x squared. But I want positive 1x squared. Okay, So I'd have to add on 4x squared. I'd have to add on 4x squared. How would I get them? Well, if I had plus 4x here, okay, that would add on the 4x squares that I need, because that times that gives me 4x squared, but it would also generate a minus 12x, which I put in that column. So this column now, this and this add up to this, I've sorted myself out in terms of the x squares. Now, I didn't want a minus 12x, I wanted no x's, so I've got to add on 12x's. How do I do that? Well, if this was a plus 12 here, that multiplied by that would give me the 12x that I'm looking for, and these two would cancel out perfectly to give me the 0x I want. At the same time, the 12 multiplied by the negative uh, 3 gives me negative 36. I don't want negative 36, I want uh, negative 7, so I have to add on, I've finished my factorizer now, I have to add on this remainder of 29 to fix it at the end so that my number term was right. So, therefore, this division here, this x cubed plus x squared minus 7, all divided by x minus 3, well, it's actually the quotient, the whole number times it goes in is x squared plus 4x plus 12, and the remainder is 29 over the thing I'm dividing by, x minus 3. And I got exactly the same answer as before, but I found that a much quicker and easier way of doing it. But it's up to you, whichever one you prefer. Now, I've got another question for you to have a go at uh, coming up. I suggest you pause the video, 
and have a go at this particular question. Um, do, it your, do it yourself and I'll go through it as a long division. Then we'll have a go at the exact same question and I want you to have a go at the quicker method. And then it's up to you to decide which way you prefer to do it. So, example two, pause the video, have a go yourself, see if you can do it. Okay, long division, I'm going to give this a go. So, we are taking x to the 4 plus x cubed. Remember, there's no x squared here. Do not forget that. It'll all go horribly wrong. Plus x minus 10. And we are dividing this by x squared plus 2x subtract 3. Okay, how do I get an x to the power 4 here? Using the highest power here. Well, I need an x squared, don't I? If I had an x squared in the x squared column and I multiplied this out, I would get x to the 4 plus 2x cubed minus 3x squared. Line under it, subtract the 2. Taking these away, you would get minus x cubed plus 3x squared. Okay, and then bring down your plus x. Now, how do I get a minus x cubed from the x column? Well, this would have to be a minus x. If it was a negative x, multiply it out. I'll get minus x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x. Okay, line under it. Subtract the 2. Minus x squared minus minus x squared is gone. 3x squared minus minus 2x squared is 5x squared and x minus 3x is minus 2x and then bring down the minus 10 what do I need up here so when I multiply it by this I get a 5x squared well I need a, a 5 so that times that is 5x squared plus 10x minus 15 line underneath it and subtract that, subtract that, um, minus uh, is 0, minus 2x, subtract minus 10 is minus 12x, and minus 10, subtract minus 15 is plus 5. Okay, and we're done. We've got to the end of our division here, and let's write out what it is. So this thing here, which I'm just going to copy here, as an answer, then, is the following. What's the quotient? Well, it's what's up on top. It's x squared minus x plus 5. What's the remainder? Well, it's minus 12x plus 5, all divided by x squared plus 2x minus 3. Remember, if R specifically what's the quotient, that's the quotient. If asked specifically to state the remainder, just the top bit is the remainder. And we're done. Now, I'd like you to have a go at the same question again. You know what the answer is now. Have a go at the same question using the quicker method. Just see if that makes sense to you. Um, you know, it's, it would be good to have both methods available. If not, don't worry so much. And work through the example when I do it, see if you can um, get your head around it. So here we go. Last time, pause the video, have a go at the same question via the quick method. Okay, so what we've got over here, we've got our x to the 4 plus x cubed plus, don't forget, no x squared, very important to have that in, plus x, subtract 10. Now, we're, going to div we're dividing it by this. Or you could think about it as factorising out an x squared plus 2x, subtract 3. Now, when we do that, we're certainly going to have a polynomial left here and some sort of remainder potentially here. So the aim of the game is to work out this quotient and this remainder by sort of fiddling method. 
Now, I want an x to the 4. How am I going to get an x to the 4 from this bracket? Well, I'm going to have to have an x squared here. Because that x squared, when I multiply it into each of these three terms, gives me an x to the 4. It also gives me a 2x cubed. And it also gives me a minus 3x squared. The x4 is sorted. x to the 4 is sorted. I'm happy. But... I didn't want x cubed. I wanted I, I didn't uh, I wanted x cubed and I didn't want a 2x cubed. So I'm going to have to subtract an x cubed. Well, in order to do that, if I subtract an x here, okay, when I multiply this out by the three terms, I'm going to get a negative x cubed, a negative 2x squared, and a plus 3x. Now look. These two combine perfectly and have sorted out my x cubed column, so I'm happy. However, now in total, I've got negative 5x squared. I want no x squared, so I'm going to have to add 5x squared. How will I do that? Well, if I add 5 here, then, and I multiply everything by this, well, I'll get my positive 5x squared. I'll also create a 10x for myself, and I'll also create a negative 15. Okay, now, that means my x squared column sorted, I'm delighted, but these two columns aren't. But I finished this part of factorization, I can't factorize anymore, so now I'm just left with a remainder to fix everything. I've currently got 13x, and I want 1x, so I'm going to have to subtract 12x's. And I've currently got minus 15, but I want minus 10. So I'll have to add 5. And hence, I've done this um, division very quickly. The answer to the, the division then, well, this is the thing we were trying to work out. And we now know that this is equivalent to, well, the quotient the amount we got left over was this here. It was x squared minus x plus 5. That's the whole number of times this went into this. And our remainder was track 12x plus 5 out of our divisor, which was x squared plus 2x minus 3. And for me, this is a much quicker way. I mean, this is four lines of quick work in here. Quite a lot on your head, but for me, much quicker. I'll leave it up to you to decide and what you find easier um, and how you find it easier to do. Okay then, just to, just to finish with then, I would suggest you read the remainder of chapter 1, which we've now finished, page 8 to 11, and work through the examples in the book. They do show a different method using a, a remainder theorem and equating coefficients. Just have a read through. I don't particularly think that's a good method. But then you must do exercise 1D, um, page 10. All those examples are very important to get through. And... Uh, when you finish that, another fantastic exercise is exercise 1E, page 10 and 11, and there are six questions there, and that just summarises the whole of this uh, uh, module that we've done, i.e. tutorial 1, 2, and 3, on um, algebraic expressions and algebraic fractions. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the following video uh, useful in your revision for Core 3.